Hi hey guys, so the, in this video I will be addressing two problems um, related to air seal in AEGs, typically M4s. The first one is the nozzle slope. It's caused by the nozzle not sealing properly to the bucking before it's fired. And it's caused by this, I wouldn't say design failure, but it's a generic problem. You can see the edge in the hole pop chamber and there is a corresponding edge on the nozzle. Sounds good, right? No, it doesn't. Uh, so this is the position the nozzle would be when it fires. Also there is BB pushing against it because you have a magazine, the BB needs to come up to feed. You probably won't notice this problem if you are at a low end build or any out of the box. Okay. You will have this, they will come with a nozzle. Except GMP, there's the only one that has a smooth nozzle, excellent nozzle. I still use it. Back to the topic. Nozzle slope is you can see. Every time I push in, I'm pushing against that edge. Simple reason, you could be the misalignment of your gearbox with the barrel, I won't address that. Let's just say it's the magazine pushing it. Okay, if you have a DSG or a high speed build, you will need a fast feeding magazine and that's a lot of pressure pushing it. That's most of the problem. How do you solve this? The best way, the way I do it, I won't say the best, but the way I do it, and so far so good, you take a G36 nozzle. The good thing about the G36 nozzle is it's smooth, like the GMP. And it has the same diameter as the slim side of the M4. So it slides just fine inside the M4 hole pop chamber. So you will won't have problem of it like of this edge getting caught on there. If you disassemble your gun most time, if you have an aluminum nozzle, anodized, you can see the wear, the scratch marks on the top of it, most likely. So now we need something to support the nozzle at the back, so it's just all smooth inside it. Uh, the way I found the easiest way would be you take a PVC tube or nylon or Teflon, even better. It will approximate diameter, okay? Close to the diameter of this. Bigger, only bigger, not smaller. Take that, you cut it in a C shape, like this. So you can bend it inwards and press down into the chamber until it reaches the edge. The nozzle should have approximately 7 mm. It should be smaller, slightly smaller. It's like 16.90 something. Okay. This particular one is uh, ATM. Then you take a 7 mm drill and you drill through the tube. Uh, preferably from this side because you have the guide. Just put the drill speed slow and Use the center section, that is 7mm, guide it through. Then take a fine sandpaper, row in, uh, in a row, file it a few times. So now you have entirely smooth internal surface with a smooth nozzle to guide it through. Next, you will need to cut the nozzle down to the M4 size. And that will leave you a problem. The internal wall, you can see the edge at the end of it. When you cut the head off, you're gonna have a, a very thin tube and if you put a BB in front of it, most, almost half of the BB is inside it and that's a problem. That means you either won't push the BB past the lip of the bucking or not deep enough because most AEG virus are bridged which means the hop window right here, we press it down, the, pe the nub of the bucking is right here. You can hold the BB more or less around here. 
there is about a millimeter of space, the BB can move. So you need the BB to be pushed under the back, the nub. So it's holding place always for your consistency issues. So what you can do is you take a brass tube that can be press fit into the G36 nozzle. This is a G36 nozzle that I uh, repurposed from for. Need to be brass or cuper because why? Because you need you can solder this brass this uh, cuper wire across it. So this means without occupying the space, I can push the BB entirely forward. Okay, this one is a, a brass pipe epoxy uh, first, what with the brass uh, the cuper wire welded then um, epoxy in place. You can also use the nail polish. Ask your girlfriend. Uh, that part solved, then you have a totally smooth moving nozzle that is always supported. You can even have the super high tension in it, but since you have that specially plastic part, it's gonna make it slide super well inside the nozzle and never tilt because there is no space for it. And if you push the BB always under the same spot to be held by the whole pop chamber. Even if you got a proving style chamber, that will have the same problem and solution is the same. Okay, down to next issue. It's about the problem with standard tuppet plates. So you have the standard one, this one right here, and you can see, okay, you have this curve for the sector gear to push onto, but here's the problem. You have the standard one. The sector gear has the teeth, uh, has that uh, little nerve, that nipple that push, pulls the top of the plate, always a bit f forward of the where the teeth starts. So what happens is before you start pulling the piston, is you are already lifting the nozzle. And especially with a normal type of plate like this, the piston almost drops the same time as the type of plate drops to the front, which means you have very little time between the piston is uh, between the piston is f totally forward and the nozzle is forward. If you watch some animations on YouTube, you can almost see that it lifts the nozzle almost instantly after the piston reaches the end, which is bad. You have no hurry in doing that. You don't need to lift the nozzle so far. And besides, there is no point to start picking up the top of the plate before you start picking up the piston. So I do this even to SSGs, not just DSGs. I cut it short and most importantly, I carved this space out so I can sync the time, synchronize the time the nozzle is being picked up by, with the time that the piston is being picked up. So I start picking up the double plate, halfway through picking up the piston, I mean, it's, the top of the plate already goes forward, and there is more. Than, if you use quantity BBs, and uh, you have the nozzle correctly placed, there is no need that extra time. I always cut piece of it off. Even SSGs, I maybe cut like uh, eight millimeters, and DSGs, I cut like this one. This one even works. I have just like like two millimeters of height right there, that is fully for backwards. This piece here is useless because this piece need to be like that because the sector gear axis has a zincness and uh, the tablet plates to be able to to stay forward. You it cannot go that much, but uh, when once that nipple on the sector gear reaches here, it's 
goes like a millimeter forwards, which already stops the BBs from being able to feed. It made this kind of useless to have that part. I just cut it off, now they do anything. So I carve this part out. The second gear starts spinning. By the time we start picking up the piston, it picks up the top eight plate. Then both of them goes back. By the time the piston is halfway, the top eight plate go already goes forward. Loading a BB, the nozzle already sealed with the BB inside. Everything ready. Piston goes forward, BB fires, and it only picks up after the piston starts picking up. But by the time, by that time, if the BB still haven't left the barrel, well, you're fucked anyways. But at least air seal wise, what the top plate can do for you, it uh, <coughs> already did. So after these two molds, molds. Okay, this. Yeah, you need to be careful with the brand that you use. This one is a bit tight, which is great. I don't need to glue anything, it's super solid on there. Okay, just do this. And it will be fine. And this is also one of the reasons the, no uh, the nozzle issue is uh, a lot of people pick up this is a modify chamber metal, sandblast finished, anodized. Looks pretty neat. People buy this aftermarket to replace their plastic hole pop chamber and suddenly gun fires worse. Why? Because there is a lot more friction. While in a plastic unit, it's actually a lot smoother, even though there is that uh, edge issue. Alright guys, thanks for watching.